you said you had like you did a lot of weird and bad shows. No, I mean like yeah. one hundreds. What would be like your biggest failure on on the uh, stage? And what did you learn from it? <laughs> so I've done. I mean, I've done a ton of bad theater, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I learned from it. Sometimes I didn't. The, this one is sort of hilarious because I wrote a one person show. Mm -hmm. And I was actually working with someone who was experienced doing these sorts of shows. He had his own theater and I was sort of signed on to, to work with him. And the show was so personal that I didn't really promote it. I, I didn't really even, I didn't take it seriously, I, I, I think, I, because I was afraid to, because it was so personal to me. And I opened the show, two people were in the audience. Both of them were critics. Oh. Neither one of them wrote about it. <laughs> it was so bad, they wouldn't even address it. Yeah. Showing up to ostensibly do their job. Uh. They didn't even, they don't, they didn't, they, they wanted no part of that mess. And it was a mess. And it was a mess because it was so personal to me that I didn't give it the time to workshop it, to show it in front of mm -hmm. people, to sort of really, really construct it. Mm -hmm. I didn't promote it because I thought like, well, whoever comes is whoever comes. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to, I don't want people who know me to know this stuff yeah, about me. Yeah. It would be okay if strangers hear these things about me, yeah. but I don't want people who know me to, to, yeah. to hear this stuff about me. So it was a failure on so many fronts. Um, it was, in some ways, like clever and freeing to do that sort of stuff, but no one wants to pay for therapy. No one wants to pay to watch someone else's therapy. You know, they want to pay to see a play and what they got was like an, a cathartic moment for me about my childhood pain, right? Whereas if I was to actually take that pain and make it into a work of art that would provide insight and delight to an audience, that would have required me sharing myself with more people and I wasn't really ready to do that at the mm -hmm. time. And as I've gotten older and matured as an audience, uh, 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 as an actor, I, I, if I'm going to reveal myself that way, then I just, now I just do it mm -hmm. and I say it. And if I am in a project, then I just say it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't try and like hide it away or whoever shows up, shows up. So it was an incredible failure. But it also taught me a lot about how I deal with sharing myself. Mm -hmm. And I will always try and promote the things that I do now. You said you weren't ready to, to talk about this stuff back then. I read you now. I don't need to now. No. So I don't I don't want to. I think at that time I was figuring out who I was in, uh, as an artist, mm -hmm. but I was also figuring out who I was as a person. And I thought that that saying this stuff out loud, you know, would make pain go away. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the thing that is that it never really goes away. You, you just sort of make it bearable. You build uh, I don't know, employ tools in your mind to work with it, uh, not to try and like release it out of the lot. People always say that to you, like, oh, you, you'll just let it go, right? Like, oh, I don't know how to let some stuff go. But what I do know how to do is, even if, if, if I can't let it go, to sort of accept it and see that there are, that there's beauty in it, that there's insight in it, that there's, um, uh, as superpowers that some pain can give you. You, you know what I mean? Th there's all these other ways of dealing. Therapy, right? You, you go to therapy and talk about mm -hmm. it, right? You don't just say it and then it suddenly evaporates. You sort of develop long-term strategies to, to cope and move forward, not mm -hmm. disappear it somehow in a public act of artistic mm -hmm. masturbation, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that's not how any of this works, mm -hmm. right? Um, so have you figured out who you are now? As a person, I think I'm getting a lot closer. Yeah, I, I think accepting that I'm 
this sounds so goofy, but like f flawed, mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? That, that there's not going to be an ideal. <laughs> there's yeah. just not yeah. that, that I, I need purpose. I need to work. I need to improve myself. Right. But like holding myself to some perfect standard is not helpful. Right. Uh, I mean, striving to something. Striving for helpful, something, but, yeah. But at the same time, giving yourself a chance to, I don't know, not be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I found, like, recently that I spent way more time punishing myself for my shortcomings mm. than celebrating the, the, the victories. Mm. And, 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 you know, some victories in my life, I feel, are the result of luck or privilege, mm -hmm. right? And maybe they're not worth celebrating because I scratched a lottery ticket, essentially. Yeah. Right. But some I, I know that I worked for, mm -hmm. right? But I wouldn't even celebrate those. I I was Why? still. I don't know. I I don't know. I think. I think I thought that if I celebrated those, I would give up my quest for a, a more ideal version of myself or that if I assumed I was doing well or that I'm doing okay, that I would drop my guard, mm. that if I didn't hurt me, then other people would, mm. you know, I thought that I was like claiming some sort of power and, and to some extent that that stuff kind of worked as a youth, right? I had this kind of like impervious nature because I already punished myself so much, no matter what anyone said could hurt me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you can't hate me more than I already hate myself. So I could like, yeah. people would say like, oh, you're so bold, uh, you know, on stage to do this sort of work. And I'm like, what did it matter? Because I already, I already hate myself. They can say nothing to me that can hurt me because I'm all, you know, that is, and, and that's a grim way to live, mm. man. And I think I've gotten out of that as an older person. And it is wild to like, you know, do something. Maybe it's a job thing or maybe it's a personal thing or maybe it's, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is to do something and just be like, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Instead of like, well, anyone could have done that. Or that's, I can be- happen often to me. I mean, like saying, oh, that was pretty good. Like I'm getting used to like, with acting, at least, getting I'm getting used to seeing myself on screen. But like, I'm more more often I'm not happy with what I did than in comparison to what other people think about what I did. Yeah, and well, it's a good thing that the audience isn't made up of you, right? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Because everyone else is like, yeah, great. Mm. One of the things that sort of helped me was like, do I think that everyone else is a fucking idiot? Mm. No, I don't. They're mm. capable people. They like what they like mm. and they like this. Mm. Who am I to say that they're wrong? You know, does it work this thinking for you? This, this way I'm thinking now. Yeah. yeah. I mean like, because I can understand it in my brain, but emotionally I'm still sometimes not there to kind of listen to this voice. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know how to get from one place to the other, but what I do know is that and you know what? It's not all the time. Sometimes the other way of thinking wins. Sometimes the darkness wins. It just does. But it's like it's in like professionally, but like on, on a personal level, how did you get to to accepting yourself more? I started on this journey because a very wise person uh, said that the mask I'm wearing can fool everyone, but it doesn't fool him mm. that he sees the, the darkness underneath and it's a matter of time before it wins. Mm. And to me, that sounded spot on enough that I made an earnest effort to, to work through it. And that meant going to a, a lot of therapy. That was the path that I had mm. available to me. So I started doing a lot of therapy. What I found was, is that there's a low hum of 
of self-loathing that, that was sort of coursing through my life mm -hmm. and trying to, to every now and again say like, actually pretty good, man. Like if I look at that kid from Weatherford who I thought was going to do something that was going to make him unhappy mm -hmm. and stay in a town that would have made him unhappy. And I'm here talking to you instead. Well, it's not one of the it's highlights of your life, I think. <laughs> Being on set today will be a highlight of your life. It's talking to me probably is not. <laughs> but it is. It is. That's the thing. It's To me, it's better than being back in my hometown yeah. working on a refrigerator, right? This is yeah. better than that. So I can say to that kid, mm. you did good, man. Yeah. This is good. And I know that when I take the time to say to that kid, you did good, mm. man that that low hum of agony temporarily goes away. It's not really gone. Mm -hmm. It still lives in me. But for a minute, telling that kid that he did a good job takes precedence in my mind and allows me to move a little bit more unimpeded, a little bit more open and mm -hmm. honest with the people that I'm, that I'm talking to, like I'm talking to you as a person. Later on, we'll talk as actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that sort of acceptance helps me connect in both ways. Do you, mm -hmm. do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't always work, right? I still have to contend with it, right? Uh, mm. But having it sometimes is better than having it never. Mm. You see? Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you have any, any kind of tools that you use on a constant level, like to remind yourself, like to, okay, talk to, the, to talk to the kid from, from the past? Like, do you have any kind of, like, are there any mental tools that you kind of like, you have in check to kind of, to, to make yourself feel better? Talking to the kid in the past is yeah. a really helpful one. Mm. But how to remind yourself to, to talk to him? Or yeah. is it like when you're like, I know now I feel like shit, I need to talk to the kid. Yeah. It's that, it's also, I don't know if you ever feel this way, but I feel a sense of permanency in any emotion. Mm. It. I think it makes me a, a little bit more tuned in as an actor, but it can make being a regular person crappy mm. because when I'm down, I feel like that's the way it really is. And that's the way it's always going to be. Yeah. And, and when I start thinking that at this point, I now consciously think, even if I don't feel it, I consciously think, but you know, that's not true. Mm. You know that this too, like all things will pass, mm -hmm. that you will be in a different state soon enough. Yeah. Right. And it's the same thing with the kid. I consciously think, okay, I'm feeling miserable right now, but that's better than what it, than what it could have been. That's better than I've made decisions and choices and expressed agency. I, I've done these things and that's good, right? So there are some things like that, that are conscious tools. There are other things like just forensically looking at what's going on. Like what are the facts? I know I feel like a horrible piece of shit right now, but like, what are the facts? And the facts are like, I, I have a, uh, I have a partner that is a, she's amazing, right? She knows stuff about me and she still likes me, right? So I'm not looking for validation through someone else, but I can say like, she's not dumb and, and she likes me. Okay. You know, I can look at my friends and be like, they're not dumb. They know me. They've known me for a long time. And they, they like me. They said that they were proud of me for this thing. I don't feel proud of it right now, but they said it. I don't think they would say that if they didn't mean it. Right. They have no vested oh interest God, in I, lying. I, I, honestly, I, I know what he mean because I know that I argued with my friends when they said something nice to me. And I was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. There's no point of like, there's no reason, you know, saying good things to me. Yeah. yeah. That, I, I, and you have to let them like not, it's not just for you too. I mean, it's for them also. Yeah. Like they, <laughs> they, they're your friends. Their opinion should matter to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, know, like, it's it's saying, such like, a shitty thing to say, like, no, stop saying good you're things. You're wrong so you, about you that. Do, yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> your opinion, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I feel like shit. It's, yeah. It, it, it's hard and it doesn't always work, but, but I try all of those things whenever I can. And sometimes some of them work yeah. and that's better than always trying nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and it has made my sort of general life Quality. just, yeah, just better, you know, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'm more successful than others. Sometimes I, that's something I can do a lot. Sometimes it's not, you mm -hmm. know, um, at the moment I feel like I'm okay at it. 
I think weirdly enough, for the last year, I haven't been good at it. Mm. And you know the fucked up thing is? I think it's because things are going well. Isn't that crazy? Is it like you're getting used to it? Or is it like when, when good becomes your new normal? I think it's because I didn't. Well, it's a few things actually. I think I, think I was so used to fighting all the time. Mm that I didn't know how to not fight, even when things were not, didn't need a fight. Mm -hmm. So I was still fighting something, it was yeah. me, not the world around me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think also I didn't trust it. It was like the world was telling me I was doing a good thing and I was like, you're wrong world, mm -hmm. you know? So I didn't trust it, I still had so much fight in me. I um, was so sure that it's going to go away and it is, nothing lasts forever, it is going to go away. Your ice cream is gonna melt doesn't mean you shouldn't eat it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, nothing lasts. Mm -hmm. Welcome to fucking temporal reality, you know? But while it's here, enjoy it. And I haven't I haven't solved it yet, you know, yeah. man. I'm not like I'm not I'm not 100% completely better or trusting or accepting of where I am right now, you know? But I am working on it. And and I think it's I think it is getting better. Mm -hmm. And when it does go away, and I know that it will, I think that I'll be able to accept that and be happy with that too, mm -hmm. you know, if I continue to employ these same kind of tools and, and tactics, you know. Nice. Look, I really hope that you will. <laughs> Thanks, because, man. I, mean, uh, I don't know you that well, but you seem to be a very good, nice person. I really enjoy talking Thanks, to man. you right now. And I think it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the things in, in the podcast, one of the things that I really enjoy right now is that like once a week I get to, you know, be in a room with a real person, yeah. talk to them. Yeah. And when we have connection, I think it's one of the best things that, that uh, I had in life for a long time. You know what that is? That's a win, man. Good yeah. job.